Hi everyone, back for the last bit of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Um, I just insert a photo here. And that was me cutting and making the edges all square. And I did realize that I made one mistake because on Christine's tutorial, she just had these two sewn together and these two sewn together. And I'm going to preempt that I might have to unpick a little hole there for the drawstring. So uh, that was one little mistake I made. So I've cut the sides, I've pressed the seam allowance and I've got a little turning bit there and I've got my little bit joined here. We're going to stitch along here, but I'm going to do it like this. Please look at Christine's tutorial. It's <laughs> far better than mine, that's for sure. But anyway, it's fun. It's a fun project and I haven't done it before. So matching that seam with the little stitch in the middle and matching this seam with the little stitch in the middle. When we're sewing along this seam here, that little stitch should be outside of the seam allowance. So I'm going to be doing a bit of backwards and forwardsing with this just while I do all these bits till the final putting it together. Okay, so I've done that. Now I've got to remedy my mistake here. The main thing is that to join these two ends, now this is Christine's using the guide is two centimetres, four centimetres, and this is going to be your trough. So what I have to do on this side, remedy my little mistake. So from there to there should be a gap unpicked. So let me just go and do that and stitch down this side. And then I do believe we'll do the same thing where we fold this in half to find that middle and just do that. Fold one seam that way, one seam that way and just do that one little middle stitch here that's outside of the seam allowance. Okay, so I've got my line stitched and I've got the hole here for the little gutter. Um, I think um, even though this is going to be maybe pressed, I might just end up doing a little hand stitch through here because this does fray and I think that the uh, material could fray with the drawstring in and out. I'm just going to put a little pin there to remind me to do that. Now I've done my little bottom thing and I have yet to unpick this little bit. Right, this will take a few seconds. Hope everyone's well. Okay. So now a little hole there. As here I've got this zigzag. I'm just going to take this top bit of the zigzag out. I created all these problems for myself by once again racing ahead, thinking I remembered everything <laughs> and missing an integral part. A bit easier to somehow stitch that down. Anyway, not the problem right now. I've done my little stitch at the bottom. So once again, doing this same thing. One thing I noticed, my machine was not liking through, going through the layers. So I've got this one facing this way, or maybe I'll put it that way. Those middle two are open and that one can face that way. Let me just pin it. hope my machine will go through this. OK, 
because I wasn't liking it before. All the layers. Alright, I've sewn that and the thing I would like to mention is have you got the little hole up the top? That's the bottom of the bag and is your bag up the right way? And I always know that this little branchy thing is towards the bottom of that circle. So yes, my bag is up the right way. Now I think I have to do this little stitch here before I do anything, just simply because once the lining's in, won't be able to access it as easily. Still be able to access it, but just not so easily. So I love this little bag. I think it's so cute. I don't know if I would use such a fray type of material. I didn't actually know it at the time when I started. I thought, oh no, it'll be okay. There's plenty of seams. I can just zigzag a little bit of a seam, etc. However, these little side holes kind of proved a point that maybe you need and also maybe a bit more seam allowance, possibly. Maybe it wasn't so wise having such a quilted edge there. I mean, the, the, the machine went through it. I am using a heavy duty machine, so it, it, it should really be all right. There shouldn't be a big, huge problem. This one's really frayed. Mending it before it's broken. <laughs> kind of. All right. Now. Okay, next step is turning this inside out. Now I want to have this at the top. I'm going to put this inside. We're going to match up the top. So seam to seam. So it's going to be like that. This side is going to match up to this side. And because I've pulled back where that little hole is and stitched down, it's helping me to open this. So we're matching those two. Now I'm going to pin it sort of halfway between the two as well, just so as it's evenly distributed. This one I'm just going to have to do the same the way it's been ironed. And then this mat. And I'm going to sew all the way around this top and then come back. Okay, uh, done and now we have this. This is going to come down to here. I'm going to stitch these two ends together. This is really thick now with two layers of this. So I, I'm, I'll see how I go with the machine. I also might stitch it just a little bit inside the line that I've stitched. Uh, the idea is, is we're meant to go over the exact same line. Um, Christine was using fairly thin cotton when she was making hers, so I'm, I'm thinking possibly that it's yeah a bit, a bit harder. Anyway, I will go and sew this. One sec. Okay, I got through. Uh, after all, it is a heavy-duty sewing machine, so, you know, it really shouldn't have a problem. Now, Dun, 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 dun. Here's the uh, here's the the trick, turning it inside out, and hoping you didn't do anything wrong. 
<laughs> yeah, this thick stuff's a lot harder. A lot harder to manoeuvre. Okay, just turning it inside out. Now the bottom is stitched into the base. That's why we stitched along the bottom there. Now, one thing I might not have accounted for was where these little origami bits um, might mess up this sort of patterning. So maybe uh, these should have been a bit higher. So this was a learning experience and I think I've still got most of that circle, which is good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do... Ah, no, the first thing we're going to do is we don't need this opening anymore, so... A little top stitch along here just a quick little one um, very very close to the edge okay I uh, could have been a little bit closer to the edge but it is what it is now going to create now a very fine little stitch along here and then I'm going to take this and stitch that along the the uh, just a top stitch to hold the lining and the edge down okay so I've done my top stitch I, I didn't get very close to the edge it's a bit wobbly that's my lack of experience I think more than anything now find this these little holes so I might mark it from the inside so the bottom of the I'll just check mine bottom of the hole is about an inch and a half from the top so it's maybe a bit lower than it should have been perhaps but I'm going to mark that an inch and a half Let's see if I can feel that yeah that's right so my next stitch is going to be all the way along here and um, I was noticing Christine uses, she doesn't look here or here or anywhere here, she looks exactly here and where she's lined this up to on the, on the plate of the sewing machine. So I'm going to do that. It might be wise for me to draw the line all the way around but I'll give it a little go and if I'm not doing it I'll draw the line. <laughs> we'll see how I go. <laughs> All right, that method worked so well. Um, I, this was way off um, out of the stitch plate, but there was a little sticker on my machine and I just used it. So it, it actually, to me, looks incredibly even. But I've realised one big problem and it's partly not knowing the dimensions of the bag and trying to make it a more intricate, slow-stitched bag um, is that I feel that this circle could have been smaller you know it's like it's supposed to be a bit of a feature but in the end the top stitch is so close to the top of the circle and the bottom of the bag gives it a bit of breathing room but it could have been down even a little bit more uh, so make a prototype first folks that's my thought so now um, all that's left is to put my two drawstrings in I have to work out what I want to put in. I never thought about that so far. I wanted to see how the colours look, how the bag looked when it's all scrunchied. If you plop it down that way, you'll be able to see that. So <laughs> I'm going to go and work out what uh, what threads I want. Okay, I found a little bit of this orange and I think I really like it. I quite like it. Better have some scissors. It needs to be about that long doubled and then I need another piece the same length just making sure there's enough here find the hole Just going to thread it all the way around just if a seam gets in the way just uh, 
see if you can poke it through by pulling that backing out a bit. This is the other hole, the other side, but we're going all the way around to the end or the start as it was. All right, now this is um, one side done. Try and even that up a bit. And now what I'm going to do is start at the opposite end. This is um this stuff's a bit awkward. It's you know, I love it. It's pretty. I'm going to definitely be tying the ends and hopefully they're not going to fray too much and the, or the end come out or anything like that. So I'm just going to go right back around again. This time we're going to go behind that behind there. right around to the point that you came in and bring this one out. Even them up. So when the bag is open, we still want enough um, you know, to tie. So I've just tied a knot. I'm going to snip off the excess. Hoping the knot doesn't come undone. I might slip a couple of stitches throughout just to hold it. Now, do the same on the other side. and even them up so there's not really a lot when it's really open there's not much there so when this is really open don't want a lot on this end either now we can pull it now the idea of this is that it should look a little bit like origami at the bottom and there it is. All done. A little bit fraying there that I might tuck that in under and stitch that like I did the um, tapestry end. Inside. The bottom is actually sewn in and so it's not going to come up or go anywhere. All right, so my thoughts by the time I finished my thoughts are that it probably works better with thinner material, but I still love it. Um, it was a bit difficult for the thicker, you know, patchworky sewn bits to sew it together. Um, this is really, uh, I imagined this being it's so in terms of um, size, I liked the size. However, I imagined that if if my bag's like that, probably this sort of size would have been better in the overall design. That's not a design fault or flaw of the actual pattern of the bag. That's me trying something I've never done before and learning as I'm going. So that's my origami bag and the end of the April Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Many lessons. Um, I, I'm always, even though I consider there's probably some flaws with this and, you know, it'll be used just to sit on my bench with maybe something in it. I am really always a bit proud of myself when I've made something that I've never made before. Even when it doesn't work out perfectly, uh, it's still exciting, very exciting. So I don't know how to photograph this. <laughs> there it is. It reminds me, uh, so I've been watching Bridgerton. 
<laughs> I'd actually watched Bridgerton before, but I went back and um, while I was cat sitting, I watched some um, of Queen Charlotte, which was the backstory to Bridgerton. And oh, I just have been really enjoying the dresses and the headdresses and the way they're doing the hair. And oh, it's just amazing. Fabulous little series. So I finished Queen Charlotte and now I'm watching Bridgerton again because now it makes a little bit more sense. Um, but these sort of things remind me that they had little bags like this sort of size and shape back then and they just put them on their wrists like that. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I think it's, it's really special from that perspective. I really like it. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. Let's see what we get up to in May. Um, I'm just going to be popping down to Tasmania for a couple of days with Huss got a terrible head cold so <laughs> it's a bit unfortunate timing but i'm going to enjoy seeing what i can see while i'm there and doing as much as i can for a couple of days thank you for following along with this and thank you to the lovely new subscribers and thank you to the lovely people who put comments it's very special that you do that and, um, well, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.